Hi, I'm Kelly Parks of Calm Waters Cloud Accounting. I have been the, in the uh, cloud bookkeeping space since 2012, and my tech stack is Receipt Bank, QuickBooks Online, Pluto, and Rewind for your backups. Before I was in the bookkeeping space, I was uh, in the marketing branding business, and I love creating content. I've taken both of those things and put them together. I have now created uh, standard operating procedure handbooks for my tech stack. I have created client handbooks for my tech stack that set expectations and tell them how we're going to share and communicate and what compliant bookkeeping looks like, all kinds of things, which I'm going to show you shortly. And uh, I have created workflows. Those workflows are created either as 17 hats templates, which I'm not going to show in this video, but you can reach out to me if you want to see them. Uh, I am also going to, so what I'm showing you is I've built them out as spreadsheets. And in those spreadsheets, I have embedded the communications you need, whether they are the emails or the um, contracts. I have embedded information gathering forms, such as the prospective client questionnaire, bank information, all of the things you need to onboard a client. And um, I have embedded uh, best practices and uh tips and tricks in there as well. So they kind of go hand in hand with the SOPs, but you can purchase anything separately. But I do have a package of the of the full set as well. So what I'm gonna start out with is showing you the SOPs because that actually leads us into some of the links to the, the workflows. The nice thing about the spreadsheet workflows is that you can uh, very often upload a CSV file into the applications such as Carbon, uh, tax dome, jetpack, financial sense, process street. You can upload the columns into there and the work is done for you. Or at the very least, you can copy and paste or have someone do it for you. And you don't have to decide on what all the processes are, what the best practices are, and the communications are already templated for you. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how I built the SOPs. The client handbook is also built in Word documents. I'm not going to show you that. What I want to show you is that I have built the SOPs in a um, PowerPoint so that you can easily brand it by adding in um, or have someone do it for you, adding in different themes in behind. And then they are totally customizable. So where I've highlighted in red is where you would likely change out your information. But I put some samples in of what I do. And then there are... Um, there are links that take you directly to the, the particular things where you want to go, as well as an index index that's more in the weeds of what's going on. So these are the niggly details, stale data checks, bad debt, all the things that drive us a little crazy that very often we can't get our team to do because they're not comfortable doing it. So the SOPs have step by steps for that. Let's take a quick snort to the top. So then what I do is I download, I customize or you customize yours and then you download it as a PDF and I have taken it next level fun. So downloading to a PDF is a nice way to have it ready for your team. But even better, you can make it more interactive by then uploading that PDF to some sort of um, ebook generator. So here we go. This is what mine looks like completed. As I said, when you download uh, it as a PDF, the links stay live. It will still continue to take you to the various pages. And so you can see all of the different things uh, that I have set up in here for you. So you can change out your tech stack if this is not your tech stack. And then we go through creating uh, efficiency undocumented transactions, not that we get any of those from our clients, creating clean files. So there's lots of ways to create clean files, including to keep working in a bookkeeping file, even if you don't have everything you need from your client. Stale data checks, write off bad debt. There's all kinds of things in here for creating clean files, payroll coming out of the wrong bank account in QBO. I think we've seen that. NSF checks, uncleared checks is another one. So just how to, oh, the what the tax codes mean. These are built for Ontario, Canada, 
but they would be very easy to change out for whatever your region and country are. This is my file folder structure. Of course, you can change it out in the um, uh, in the PowerPoint. Super easy to change it out for what yours is, but it certainly gets the juices going on what you are going to have as a file folder structure. What your naming conventions are for those reports. This is my naming convention and what maybe the standard report uploads would be. Other naming conventions that you may want to use in the bookkeeping just so that everything stays the same, client to client, file to file, and everybody knows what the difference is on these. A little bit about entities. My standard chart of accounts numbering, of course you could change that out in like three seconds to what yours is. What to be careful of in chart of accounts, how we uh, will collaborate with our clients. When I said that I have a bookkeeping workflow, you could take my bookkeeping workflows, house them somewhere, or do a deep link into, let's say, uh, TaxDome or um, uh, Financial Sense, Carbon, 17 Hats, however you do your deep linking using your Chrome browser. You could put a link in there that takes them specifically in. So this is what my standard cloud accounting uh, workflow looks like. Let's just get me out of the way. As I said, the communications are built in. The days, you can assign them to people. Alternate communications. And a lot of my workflows have links to take them to um, different places. Now, what you could also do if you're housing your SOP correctly, you could have links in there right to the page of how to do certain things as well. So lots of possibilities for linking back and forth. So this is actually, I am totally in the way, this is actually uh, what the workflow looks like. So you could upload this particular column and then add in the best practices into any workflow application, or you can just make a copy of it for your different clients. And so I've thrown in a few additional um, communications as well. Let's take a quick run back to here. There I am, just moving around. So this is pre-bookkeeping. So again, this is the overview. This isn't the actual workflow, but this is the order that you need to get the work done in. Year-end procedures, so checking the statement and that the trial balances, I have a workflow for that because this is a niggly little thing that happens sometimes and people don't like to check this because it's a little bit awkward. So I have said how to find the transactions that are causing trouble if your statement ending balances do not match your account register and your, um, well, if they all don't match in general. Um, what not to turn on? <laughs> Check with your manager first. Standard recurring, when you use a recurring transaction and when you use a bank rule. What some of the standard ones may be and how to create them. One of the standard ones that I use is HST outside of the sales tax module. So I've shown you the journal entry on that one. I don't talk about a lot of certification stuff. This is next level stuff. This is actually using QuickBooks and the other applications efficiently. So I don't cover payroll or sales tax with, within the module. I do cover payroll. I do cover sales tax outside of the module what the standard reports are that I use in my company, and then a link on how to customize reports. And then this is what the reports would look like in my company. I number them and then layer them so that they make sense for myself and my clients. So you can, uh, what the company settings are that make sense to turn on when you are initiating a new file. And then what reporting, like why, what are they looking for in the reports? Balance sheet profit and loss. Um, then we go on to talk about a little bit about client engagement um, and how you interact with them, what security uh, practices we have in play, and how we manage our security. And then we have the client onboarding workflow. So this is, again, the one that I have uh, for sale, including how uh, how your client can get them, themselves uh, rep a client here in Canada. and um, But you could add in the links for any U.S. sites as you needed to. These right here lead to our uh, forms. 
So there are document collection forms. And so the first one in it, if you house your forms in the proper place, your you will click on the link and you don't have to look for a form. All you have to do is open it. And this is what this particular form looks like. You just open it and you send it. So it's a fairly slick process. Uh, what the communications are going to be, what the other forms are. Again, we need the bank reconciliation information and perhaps we need payroll and uh, we need their business document information. And away we go. I send out a confidentiality agreement early on and that goes in my file review because I review a file as part of a paid engagement before I quote them. I don't engage a client until they have given me all of the information that I need to do my work. So a confidentiality agreement goes out early, but uh, the onboarding, con the full engagement contract does not go out until I have all the information I need to start working. And then I start to set up the um, applications for them and set the expectations of what's coming next. Uh, year-end procedures. This would be the, the one for the year-end procedures. Um, creating how to use Chrome browser effectively, how to bookmark it, and uh, supply them with an actual accounting bookmark so they're working super efficiently in the um, QuickBooks online uh, programs and the what do you call it? The applications. If you're not sure what that means, please get a hold of me because I'd love to tell you how to use your Chromebook, your Chrome browser effectively with bookmarks. Anyways, then we move into Receipt Bank, and there are some tutorial links in there, and when to publish, how to publish. There's a little chart when it's archived, when it's published, and do you publish as a bill, an extent expense, and how to move something to sales because it's likely going to come into costs, just best practices in general. And um, more on expense reports. I love the expense reports in here. So that's a great little benefit. So then we have uh, QBO, the settings, users, using the sales tax module, just a best practice with that. But then I have a series on using sales tax outside the module because you may not always be able to use it depending on some specifications from the client, how to change HST when it's not 13%. And then of course, uh, general BFF stuff, shortcuts, including the dates. I love the date shortcuts, in task calculator, all kinds of user hints, and away we go. Bank feed best practices to create clean files and how to classify with no source document if you are doing a higher level engagement. And away we go, reconciliations, reclassifying inside and outside of QBOA and customizing reports, best practices and tips for Pluto. And then for Rewind, there is a user video for Rewind, but also I have a, a workflow that actually talks about a number of things. And it also has video links that I have created and how to create a QBO file copy. One is using Rewind. One is if you are doing a fresh start and not using Rewind. And then I have Advanced Rewind File Restore coming this week. So this is the beginning of August. Um, coming this week, I am going to be adding in um, how to migrate a file from QuickBooks desktop seamlessly and effectively. Actually, I've already added it in. It's just not here yet. And that is a, a handbook on how to do it. You just open it up and there's the handbook. And away we go. Um, so some best practices around that. And then, as I said, we've got a, we've got a link. The other thing that I want to show you is um, this is the, the there is a version that is for either lower engagements, rescue files, or um, if you're just getting the taxes done at the end of the year. So this is basically working outside of the this is the generic one. This is what you would would be using. 
So this is how to process uh, QBO files using, so a lot of the stuff stays the same, but how to process QBO files uh, using the, the bank feed as opposed to using source documents in conjunction with uh, a number of applications. Let's just see if I can get there. Sorry, super quick. Uh, so this is QuickBooks and it basically talks about how to use the, we gotta get through some stuff, sorry. How to use the bank feed effectively if you are not going to have source documents. So this is a much shorter version. It doesn't talk about the other ones, but super useful, especially I, I think for accounting firms or for um, rescue files. And this is my handbook. So uh, by the way, the last two that I just showed you, the SOP, you could easily take out some pages and convert those to onboarding uh, handbooks for clients, especially if they are gonna be doing a lot of their own work, you could easily turn that into a client facing SOP as well. This is my handbook. Again, you can purchase it from me and it comes as Word documents and as a PowerPoint. Again, I love PowerPoint though. Um, what is cloud accounting? Just bring them uh, into adopting it and why it's a great option for a lot of them. What some of the commonly used accounting terms are, what the importance of their reports are. And there is there are links that take them to various places to show them what the PL statement means and why it's important. So you can have those conversations with them and show them in real time. Bookkeeping best practices. And then this could be a client workflow. So you can actually pull it out of the PDFs or the, of the Word documents or the JPEGs and create a client workflow. Although I do have a client workflow template as well. How they're gonna communicate with us and how they're gonna share documents. So I lay out precisely how we are going to communicate when and um, what the different situations mean, how we're gonna share documents. And then I have given them some basic tutorial links so that if I'm not around, they can go ahead and fix their bank feed, for example, or add invoices. So these are the basic tutorials. The next level would be if you created a, if you converted this SOP into a client SOP handbook. My, my peace of mind policies, my security, and then a quick bookkeeping so that they know that they're going to receive an engagement letter and basically what it's going to look like. So that is uh, that. I just wanted to give you a quick run through of what I have. I've got a number of onboarding um, templates and forms. I have file review so that you can uh, uh, review an existing client. And then in the onboarding is uh, a file for, so that's an existing client. And this is if you are going to review a file that you are either it's unknown to you or you're getting it ready to quote the file. So there is, and including there are some contracts and communications in there. So basically a confidentiality agreement and the fact that you are only reviewing the file. My contracts have not been vetted by a lawyer. They are really just to set expectations and diffuse frivolous lawsuits. Discontinuation of services, and this one has a lot of links in it that will help you with the discontinuation process because it is a bit of a process and what some of the best practices are for this. There are, uh, I'm not seeing them right now. Oh, here we go. And there's a number of links on how to get yourself out of the applications or rehome the applications, transfer billing, whatever you need to do. Create or migrate QBO files. You just saw that one earlier. That's the one uh, creating them. Client handbook, Chrome bookmarks. I have Chrome bookmarks, so literally you can start working in an accounting one. And then I have some bookkeeping ones. So there's a, a, a rescue file one that I'm working on. That's always a dog breakfast. Um, you saw the standard accounting style, but this is the one that is both firm and client. So uh, this is the stuff that the client would do and it's built out for them to use for a full year. And then there is the firm work. 
So this is an interesting way, and then you would just copy it for each of your clients. And uh, you could you could roll through this pretty successfully without needing an application. And uh, you can see that you can get your work done. So at any rate, that is the long and short of my templates. Actually, I guess it was a bit long. I hope you don't mind. And you can just get a hold of me, Kelly at comwaters.ca or Sassy Coach. Dot coach it's s a a s y and that is where you will find my um templates for sale thanks again bye